Hi guys, today I'm filling up my everyday makeup drawers, which are almost completely empty. This one is empty. This one has just a few things in it. I'm actually getting ready to film a sunscreen or a lip sunscreen showdown. So all of those are in here right now. But other than that, I need to fill these up. Usually I have a recap of what was in my drawer previously, but since my last everyday makeup drawer, I moved and also decluttered my collection. So we are just gonna start completely fresh today. I unpacked everything just into my Alex drawers so we can pick out a completely new set of products. I love rotating through my collection. It really allows me to make sure that I use everything that I own and it just keeps things fresh and interesting. So let's shop my stash together and pick out some products. Just really happy to be reunited with my collection because I mean it was packed for like a week and a half so I've gone quite a while without wearing makeup actually and I just miss it so I feel like I'm rediscovering everything for the first time. Let's see, I do want to put in my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is a mini as you can see I have pan in here and I want to try and use this up this year. I would say this is my favorite primer that I own at the moment. I don't have a ton of primers, but this is my go-to right now. I, I do really like this, especially in the summertime. So for the rest of my foundations, let's see. I feel like I haven't used this one in a while, the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. I was using the CoverGirl Clean Invisible a ton before I packed up, so let's go back to the CoverGirl Essence now. I, I do really enjoy this one. I would say I, I like the Clean Invisible one a little bit better. It also happens to be like a third of the price, <laughs> like half to a third of the price, depending on where you're buying things. But I kind of miss this one actually. So let's put this one in. This is actually a hair too light for me. So I'm also going to add in my Glow Recipe Hue Drops. I actually like to wear these under that foundation because it helps just kind of balance out the shade a little bit. And then for something with a little bit higher coverage, I'm gonna add in my, let's see, do I want Physicians Formula? or ColourPop. I can't decide. Let's do Physicians Formula. I also feel like I haven't used this one in a really long time. This is a great, actually pretty high coverage foundation. So this way I'll have a full coverage and a light coverage option. I could also mix these two together. I don't think I've ever tried that. Moving on to concealer now. I'm just going to grab these two right on top because I'm curious to try mixing these two together. The Milani Under Eye Brightener in Rose and the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer in N2. As I said, unfortunately N2 is a bit too dark for me, so I'm thinking maybe if I mix it with this brightener, I'm just kind of curious to see how they work together. I think I'm just gonna stick to those two. I also just feel like it's been a very long time since I've used this Milani corrector, and I just want to get, get back into it. This is actually a new thing to my collection. This was under like the Sephora Beauty Offers when I placed an order recently, and it's actually the first product I've ever tried from one size. It's their Ultra Pink Loose Powder, and I am so excited to try this. It actually does look very pink, especially compared to my e.l.f. light pink powder. Yeah, it looks very pink actually compared to the e.l.f. one. So I'm really curious to try this out. I think I'll have this be my under eye setting powder. And then I also wanna have a pressed powder. I only have two options for this, but I'm just gonna go back to my CoverGirl Clean Fresh pressed powder. Nice big pan in there. So I will probably be using this up pretty soon. Lastly, I'm going to pull in actually two setting sprays. These are the two that I mentioned in my video about products I want to use up that's like not a project pan, but just products I want to use up this year. I added these two to my list of things I would like to use up because they're both minis and they're both kind of running low. This is the JLo Beauty Glow and Get It Hydrating Mist. And as you can see, there's a pretty big dent in there right now. This is a more hydrating setting spray. And then I'm also going to add in the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. I've been using this more recently and I've been reminded just how good of a product this is. Like, this is actually so effective. Who knew? Yeah, there's definitely a reason why so many people swear by this. It, it is really good at keeping your makeup in place, which has been really handy, especially in these hot summer days. So that'll be my long wearing setting spray. Next for cheeks. I also want to keep in mind that this is really the last month of real summer that we have before I get into my fall makeup obsession, which really kicks off September 1st. So we have just a few more weeks of summer makeup. So I want to make sure to pull in any summery products that I feel like I haven't gotten enough chances to use yet this summer. I definitely think of summer as the time that I like to wear warmer bronzers. So I'm going to pull in my warmest bronzer that I have, which is this one from LYS. This is their No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick in the shade Motivate. Mine looks kind of messy in there, um, but I love this bronzer. It's very creamy. Definitely a little bit on the warmer, more caramely side, 
but I do enjoy that in the summer. And then for a powder, I'm going to pull in my Sigma matte bronzer in light. Believe it or not, this actually is one of my deeper powder bronzers. And again, I do tend to reach for my deeper powder bronzers in the summertime. So I think this will be a good one. I also do feel like this one has gotten the least use from me recently. I really want to grab my Glossy Cloud Paint, but I've been using it so much. I'm going to actually switch to a different liquid bronzer. Let's pull in my Makeup Revolution bronzing drops in the shade Scorched. These are marketed as bronzing drops. I don't really use bronzing drops in the way that people usually do, I guess. Like, I don't mix it with my moisturizer or anything like that. I just prefer to use this as a liquid bronzer, and it's actually really beautiful. Um, kind of has, like, a little bit of a reddish undertone to it, which I'm all about. So... That will be my liquid. So that way we have a cream, liquid, and powder bronzer. That's perfect. So next for cream and liquid blush, I want to make sure to pull back in my Lawless Cream Blush in Gumdrop. Not that you can't wear pink blush all year round, but I definitely think of this as a fun like spring and summer color. So I want to make sure to use this a few more times before summer ends. So I have a pink blush. I also want to grab a red blush. It's so hard to pick only a handful of blushes, you know? This is a pinky red. I do think this was in my last rotation as well. This is the AOA Studio Plush Blush in the shade Cumulus. It's a really fun bright watermelon red, and this is another one that I really think of as a summer shade, so I do want to pull this in because I don't feel like I got to use it enough before I packed up my collection. So I'm going to add that one in, and I definitely want some warm tones as well. I'm also going to throw in the Tower 28 Cream Blush in the shade Magic Hour. Just a beautiful, nude, warm, peachy, tan color. Great all year round, but I love this one, especially in the summertime. It just It's just so flattering, like just such a flattering color. This is another one that I was hoping to hit pan on this year. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, but I can at least try. Okay, so I think that should be good in the cream blush category. I do also want to pick a powder blush. I'm going to add this one in. This is such a fun summer shade, Milani Luminoso. Another one that I just feel like I haven't gotten to use enough yet this summer, so let's add that one into the mix. And then I think this is another repeat from my last rotation, but this is the Koki Soft Gradient Blush in Bellissima. Such a pretty peachy and rusty red shade. I still haven't gotten around to repressing this. I still plan to repress it and take out a little bit of that deep red just to balance out the shade a little bit and make it all one color rather than that gradient. Even though the gradient makes it really pretty, I do just think it makes it a little bit harder to get an even application on both cheeks. Either way, I definitely want to make sure I use this a few more times this summer too because this is just the perfect sunburnt red blush. So that should be plenty for blush. I also want to pull in, I think just one highlighter. I'm just going to pull in this one. This is another thing I want to hit pan on, the Aether Beauty Pink Diamond Dust Highlight. Maybe I'll even use this as an eyeshadow. This is such a beautiful shade for both the eyes and cheeks. So yeah, I just want to try to get as much use out of this as I can. I keep thinking I see the pan in there, but I, I don't think so. You know what? One more thing. I want to add in the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter to use as a liquid highlight and also as a complexion mixer because I just remembered I actually love this mixed with that Physician's Formula foundation. They make such a beautiful combo. I don't think I've tried it with the CoverGirl before. Um, and then I also would like to have this as an option to use for liquid highlight in case I'm not in the mood for like a super sparkly, blingy highlight. <laughs> okay, so here's my lipstick drawer now. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of silly. I want to get another one of these acrylic drawers for my lipsticks, I think. Maybe maybe two. These are all the lipsticks I have now. I have seven, which is so nice. Let's see. I do want to pick out at least one lipstick. I know this was in my last rotation as well, but I'm going to put the Bite Beauty Lip Crayon and Stinger in again because, again, this is just such a summery shade to me. And I also feel like I just haven't used this enough yet this summer, so I need to use this. So that will be like a fun bold color. And then let's also do this one. For this is from the brand Queen Musea in the shade Dorian. And this is a muted, warm, pinky coral. Really beautiful, really unique shade. And I also feel like it's kind of summery. So let's use that one. So those will be my two opaque lipsticks. Now this drawer looks even sillier. <laughs> so here are my tinted lip balms. I want to grab this one. I haven't used this one in a really long time. It's the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip in Hibiscus. 
For a nude, I'm going to pull in my favorite. This is the Revy Beauty Effortless Lip in the shade Lily. Just a perfect warm nude shade. One more, another really summery color. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Cheery. Just such a cute orangey coral shade. Then for glosses, I want to pull in my Lawless Forget the Filler in the shade Juicy Watermelon, a really fun pink. Definitely a summery product to me. I also want to add in my CoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss in You're Just Jelly, which is like a sheer red. This one also just feels like summer to me. Just a very fruity, juicy shade. Then for a lip stain, let's do the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain in the shade Coral Cutie. This is a really orangey coral shade. So yeah, I think that should be enough for lip products. Also want to pick out some cream shadows. Let's see. Let's do this one from ColourPop. This is a little quirky. I kind of go back and forth between this one and Ritz, but this is a beautiful bronzy shade with some silver glitter to it. Just such a gorgeous shade. And then I've also been trying to rotate in my Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadow pretty frequently this year just because I am kind of trying to hit pan on this. Definitely have a long way to go, but this is just a really pretty rose gold eyeshadow base. It's very warm and um, great for kind of like bronzy, copper sort of looks. And then I also want to pull in this topper here. This is the Ulta Beauty Lustrous Foil Shadow in Rose Gold Leaf. This is so beautiful. Very foiled, very glittery, really intense. Just a great topper shade. I think this might also be really pretty layered over that Charlotte Tilbury cream shadow. I also want to grab one eyeshadow stick. Let's do the e.l.f. No Budge eyeshadow stick. This one's in the shade Copper Chic, and I am just in love with this shade. I used it again recently and just it made me want to use it more. <laughs> Now I want to pick out some palettes. I'm going to pick about 8 to 10 palettes to put in my palette basket for the next rotation. This is always so fun and so exciting. Also, so hard <laughs> to choose, but let's do it. First one I already know is going in the basket. This is the newly revamped and relaunched Naked Palette from Urban Decay. I actually haven't even had the chance to use this yet, but I am so excited about this because I actually never tried the original Naked Palette from Urban Decay and I always wanted it. Like I always had such FOMO over it. So I cannot wait to create some looks with this. Definitely be on the lookout for some YouTube shorts with this. So this is one of the main palettes I want to focus on this month. But of course I also wanna pick out some older palettes. One that I know I wanna put in is this one from Alter Ego. This is the Midsummer. Beautiful summer color story. I love the mix of greens and taupes and warm tones in here. Let's see, I do want to grab at least one colorful palette. I'm going to do this one from Nomad, actually. This is the New Zealand Stargazing palette. Really fun mix of blues and purples in here, and the shimmers in here are just ridiculous. Especially this, like, gold and peach duochrome here. Ooh, yes, I have to use that ASAP. <laughs> Yeah, I love the mix of peaches and purples and blues and pinks. I definitely want to do some colorful looks with this soon. For some more peachy shades, this label is so worn off, but this is the Essence Coral Me Baby palette. This is another very summery palette to me, and I, again, feel like I haven't used it enough yet this summer, so let's add this one. Trying to decide which of my flower palettes I want to add in this time. Should we do Coastal? For some reason, I'm just not feeling this one right now. I think I want to do Jungle Lights. I love these shades, especially that coral up here. I actually think this would also go really well with either Midsummer or Coral Me Maybe. So yeah, let's put that one in. Definitely a summery palette to me. I still don't feel like my itch for pastels has quite been satisfied yet this summer, so I am going to add in the Alter Ego Dream Gaze. I absolutely love this palette, even though I don't love all of the textures in here. Some of them are supposed to dupe the like cream formula from Natasha Denona, and I just don't think that type of texture is quite for me, but it really doesn't stop me from using this palette. In fact, I would say the Cornflower Blue Hazy is one of my most used shades, even though it is that kind of creamy texture. I don't know if that texture just doesn't work for me well with like pastels or if I just don't like that texture <laughs> overall but like I said it doesn't stop me from using this palette this just has some of the most beautiful pastel shades between those blues and the yellows I love that kind of electric brat yellow down there in the bottom too yes I definitely need to use this some more <laughs> another one that I'm feeling drawn to right now is this Sigma cool neutrals palette this is actually such a stunning and versatile palette 
I love how it ranges from really warm mustardy browns to those really smoky tones. There's just yeah, there's a lot going on in here. I do kind of feel like this is good for this time of year, like this kind of late summer into fall. I know fall doesn't technically start till September, like late September, but in my eyes, you know, August is when we're kind of transitioning to fall. It's like back to school season. And yeah, I'm just really into these tones right now. I like that it has a little bit of those warm browns that I love. I was tempted to pull in ambiance again, but I've had that in my basket so much. And this has kind of like those first six shades definitely give ambiance vibes, but then the rest of the palette is just, you know, a little bit different. There's like a lot of variety in here, so I'm excited to use this again. I think the last one I'm gonna grab is my I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona. The main reason I want to pull this in is actually because Alter Ego just released, I think it's meant to be a dupe for this palette. The name is escaping me right now. I think it might be the Daylight palette, I'm not sure, but I think I'm supposed to get that in PR, so I want to compare the two once I get that. I've actually never been able to compare an Alter Ego dupe to the original inspiration, so I'm really excited to be able to compare them, swatch them. Definitely want to be able to have this out for comparison purposes, and also so just because I really like this palette. It has grown on me a lot. I'm really curious to see if the Alter Ego one is a good alternative because if so, I did feel like this palette was a little bit overpriced. I felt like there was a little bit of overlap between the shades. I also felt like some of the shades, especially that deep matte brown, were not the best quality and not what I would expect quality-wise for the price point. But regardless, I've really enjoyed the palette. I've gotten so many beautiful looks out of it and it's just a great go-to for soft everyday neutral looks. Kind of like a more subdued counterpart to Sigma Cool Neutrals. So that's actually only eight palettes, which I think is perfect. Normally I have 10 and sometimes that feels like a little bit too much, but I actually feel like this is a perfect number to have. It's a good little mix of neutral and colorful, but also um, sometimes I get overwhelmed when I have like 10, 12 palettes in here. The basket is just so stuffed full. So yeah, I think this will be perfect. I actually am really excited about this little selection. And then as always, I also like to put together a custom magnetic palette. So this is my newly decluttered palette of magnetic singles and depotted shades. I feel like I want a little more green. My palette basket has a few greens, but I want just a little bit more green in there. Let's do, I'm gonna go for my kind of like greens and golds. This is Rodeo Drive from the BH Lost in Los Angeles palette. Then I think this one is gonna go really nicely next to that. This is Exotic from the BH Cosmetics San Tropez palette. This one's right there and this is a good matte to add in. This is Runyon Canyon from the BH Cosmetics Lost in LA palette. I like to kind of alternate my shimmers and mattes, so let's do that. I also think since we're nearing the end of Brat Summer, I want my like Brat Yellow here. This is Sunny from the BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette. Yeah, I like that. That's fun. Also want to add this. This is more of like a minty green and taupe shade. This is the shade Coastline from the BH Summer in Saint-Tropez. Kind of thinking like a deep denim blue would be pretty with these. This is Bay from BH Saint-Tropez. Let's throw that one in the mix. Yeah, this is kind of fun. I'm going to add in this kind of bronzy rose gold shade. I think this looks really pretty with greens. This is Grandstand from Makeup Geek. Let's add a kind of like rusty brown just just for a little bit more contrast, this is the shade Happy Hour from the BH Mimosa palette. Throw that one there. Kind of throwing off my pattern here, but that's okay. I need just like one more. I think I want this peachy matte. It's actually a sequin shade from ColourPop. This is the shade Vibrant Thing from the ColourPop Miss Bliss palette. Just a really beautiful dusty peach. Okay, kind of throwing off our symmetry there, but that's kind of just how it goes with magnetic palettes. Ooh, that is a fun late summer color story. Okay, kind of awkward swatches, but how fun is that? Ooh, I can't wait to play with this palette. So with that, let's hop into the get ready with me and play with some of these products that we picked out. Okay, I'm just sitting down to film this get ready with me and look who shows up on her tree. I'm not sure if this tree is gonna stay in the background, but I didn't have anything to put over here. I'm thinking of getting just like a fake plant or something, like a big, big fake tree or I don't know, something along those lines to fill out this half of the background. But in the meantime, we put our little cactus cat tree back here. And I don't know, you guys let me know. Do you want me to leave it? 
as is because I'm sure my cats will be more than happy to participate in my videos via the cat tree <laughs> if you guys want, but if it's too distracting also I understand. Okay, I just turned the fan off. I just remembered that I should probably turn that off because it might be loud. I don't know where my sponge went, so I am going to opt for the CoverGirl Simply Ageless because I actually prefer to apply this with my fingers anyway. But I am going to go in with the Glow Recipe Hue Drops first as kind of a bronzy primer. And this will also help to even out the slightly too light shade of that CoverGirl Essence. Don't usually love bronzing drops, but this one actually has the perfect amount of pigment to it, so I don't have to dilute it with anything. And it just gives like the most perfect level of bronziness to my skin while still looking believable too. Actually, let me bring a little bit onto my chest as well, just to even things out a little bit. Yeah, like I said, the background is a work in progress and also the lighting is a work in progress. We need to put up our blackout curtains on this window because this window actually doesn't even have blinds on it. <laughs> so I think I am a little bit unevenly lit on this side. All right, so with this CoverGirl Essence, as I always say, it's really helpful to just warm it up between your fingers before you apply it. I just find that I get a much better blend that way. Let's try this concealer and corrector combo. So I'm going to dot some of this Milani Conceal and Perfect Under Eye Brightener in Rose. It's been so long since I've used this. Right here. Actually a little bit in the corner too. I'm actually just going to mix the two together rather than layering them. And I'm hoping this mixture will be a better shade than just that concealer on its own. I think on the eyes, I want to do a colorful look using a mix of my Magnetic palette and my Alter Ego Dream Gaze. I think I'm going to do some kind of combination of those two. So I want to keep my cheeks kind of nude so it doesn't look like just too much. Um, for bronzer, I'm going to go in with the Revolution Bronzing Drops. Just taking a little dollop of that on my hand. And then for blush, I'm going to use the Tower 28 Cream Blush in Magic Hour. Just because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do on the eyes, so I know this will go with pretty much anything. Let's try out this One Size Pink Powder. I am so curious about this, especially because it is so pink. This is like Pepto-Bismol pink. Alright, so I tap some into the lid. I'm going to apply this with my Makeup Revolution Velour Puff. Alright. Okay, it actually doesn't look too pink. I was worried it was going to be, like, a little bit too pink. But it actually looks nice. <laughs> Alright, let's do the other eye. I will say the powder's coming out kind of chunky, and it's, like, not wanting to dissolve <laughs> into my puff. It's, like, almost a little bit gritty. But maybe, I don't know, maybe you just kind of have to work it in there. I think I ended up with a little bit more powder on this side with the puff. I just love what pink powder does to my under eyes. I'm actually going to apply my CoverGirl pressed powder with the wider side of the puff. I actually do think I may have applied a little bit too much pink powder to this side because I am seeing just a little bit of pinkness like right here kind of around the edges but that's okay. I mean it kind of just blends into my blush there. I am going to use my Aether highlight in pink diamond dust today. And I think that'll also maybe kind of help cover up the pink, the overly pink edges here. Yeah, I don't know. I think I might still like my e.l.f. pink powder a little bit better just because this one really is so pink. Maybe this is better suited to medium skin tones. I think I just have to be careful because this side doesn't look too pink, but this side I applied a little bit too much. I think that's my conclusion for now. Wow, I have missed makeup so much. This is actually my first time applying makeup in almost two weeks since since we moved, since I packed everything up. 
and I've missed it so much. It was good to be reunited with my collection. Also, cracking open a brand new NYX Thicket Stick It Brow Gel, this time in the correct shade. I have missed this product so much. I haven't plucked my eyebrows in probably way too long, so I don't know how good this is gonna look. But I don't know, sometimes I like the way my brows look when they're not plucked, so let's just go for it. Not too bad. I mean, they look a little bit just like messy and undone, but it's also just kind of what's in right now trend-wise anyway, so. After that dries, I might use a little bit of my NYX brow pen. But yeah, this shade, Cool Blonde, is so much better than taupe, which is funny because usually I'm taupe in everything else, but Cool Blonde is a little bit lighter, which is also so confusing because on the uh, Ulta website, in the swatches, the taupe shade looks lighter than Cool Blonde. So that was part of the reason why I wanted to try that shade. But then when I got it, it was just way too dark. So Cool Blonde it is. I'm going to stick to this one from now on. I almost want to do something kind of crazy on the eyes, like colorful. I think I want to do like a blue and yellow eye look. Let me start with a peach in the crease. I'm going to go with the shade Lantern from the Dream Gaze palette. Yeah, I think I want to do a peach, yellow, and blue look. I'm excited. So then on a shader brush, this is the Real Techniques shading brush. That crease brush I used was the BK Beauty A503. But with this shader brush, I'm going to pick up some of the shade Hazy here from Dream Gaze again. And I'm packing that here in my outer corner. And I'm really blending that all the way into about halfway across the lid. Then on that same brush, I'm just flipping it over and I'm going to pick up some of that bright yellow green from my custom palette. And then that is going on the inner half of my lid. Then back to Dream Gaze, I actually want to take some of Fizz, which is a little bit more green. It's like a really light lime green. And I'm going to pop that in my inner corner. Next, I'm taking a little bit more of Hazy, and I'm smudging that here just on the outer half of my lower lash line. Yeah, I'm going to fill in my brows a little bit with the NYX Brow Pen in Taupe. Just feel like I could use a little more structure. Then before I do mascara, I'm just going to go in with some Urban Decay All Nighter. And the mascara I'm using right now is the 100% Pure Fruit Pigmented in Black Tea. I actually just plucked my eyebrows a little bit because I actually feel like it's easier to pluck my eyebrows once they're already done and filled in because I can really see what's outside of the lines of what I want. For the lips, I think the Elf Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Cheery is the perfect choice for this look. And I'm going in with kind of a sheer application of this. That was so much fun, very summery, especially because I just feel like the summer is flying by and I have not gotten to do enough summery makeup looks yet. But I love this look. I, I just love the combination of blue and yellow and the peach also, like the orangey peach is so fun. Anyway, this was such a fun video and I cannot wait to keep using all of these products that we picked out. If you want more content from me, I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership where I upload an extra vlog and makeup video every month, so I'd love to see you over there as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye!